Hi everybody, it's Dara, and today we are going to be making a really, really exciting raw food recipe, and it's dairy-free, gluten-free crepes, savory crepes. So that's what I've been doing this past week, is I've been perfecting these crepes so that I can show them to you and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are soft and they are kind of chewy and we can eat them guilt-free. They're made out of coconut, flax, and zucchini. Um, and we make a batter, just like we make a batter for anything else. Yes, I'm on. So, here goes. What you will need for this, uh, to make this recipe is a dehydrator. I have not tried it in an oven on a low temperature. I do not know if it works. Um, you can try it and let me know. Um, but a dehydrator is a really great thing to have if you do want to follow a plant-based lifestyle because you can make crepes, you can make breads, crackers, dried fruit, um, seasoned dried nuts and seeds. There's just a myriad of things that you can do. So I recommend the Excalibur, the nine tray, and then you'll also need to get these Teflex sheets. I have a very large dehydrator. It's called a Cabela and it's about this high. And when I was private chefing, I was round the clock making kale chips, which I have here. I made them the other day. Kale chips and granola and those are some other things you can make. So you can really, really appeal to kids and to people who um, are used to raw food and breads and crackers. So that's why I'm highly recommending this recipe and I'm so excited to share it with you because it's really easy. Uh, so here we go. We might as well start. Um, flax seeds. I have a very large bag of flax seeds which I keep in the freezer. I do buy most things in bulk, uh, just so you know, the things that I use a lot. So um, I don't remember where I got these flax seeds. Probably, yes, Sun Food Organics. And they have nuts and seeds and I like to buy from them. So I'm going to take a cup of this and what we do with flax seeds because they're best ground fresh. Sorry, I left it outside in the sun. I had washed it and then dry, uh, dried it and it had some moisture in it and you don't want to put something dry and you want to ground it, grind it up dry so I left it out in the sun to dry. I had already made sweet crepes this morning and I gave you that recipe. So all we want to do is take one cup of flax. If you do not have a dry container, it just has square, two square blades at the bottom. You can use a coffee grinder. Um, that's another way to go. I believe the Nutribullet will grind it down as well. And I'm using this all of the time. It's a great investment. So I just want to make sure my mic, yes, so you could hear me. Okay, so I'm going to just quickly grind my Vitamix. You can also buy ground flax. I just, uh, I just, it's really the freshest. You don't want the oil uh, to go rancid. It's the freshest when you grind it. It's just amazing. It's got so much life and it's got omega-3 fatty acids. Very good for our brain and our nervous system. It's that easy. So you can do all kinds of things. You can grind corn, you can grind chia seeds, you can grind nuts, make nut flour, cashew flour, almond flour. Okay, so here we go. Put that in here. You could, I recommend putting in the water first. So I'm going to get two cups. I used two and three quarter cups of water for my last batch. Now this is really going to depend on you and your zucchini. Because we're going to use a zucchini. You can use two zucchini, you can use one zucchini. We want like it to feel like a batter and I'm going to show you what the consistency is. So depending on how moist the, how, how moist the zucchini is, how much water is in it, sometimes you have to adjust according. So I will fill this up with two and three quarter cups. I'm going to use my smaller one. This is really big. I'm doing the water, I'm doing the water first so that it's at the bottom because if the, all the powder gets at the bottom, then you have to stir it to get the water in so it can mix. Okay. The water is in. We are going to put the flax in. Now, we also, it's nice to have an offset spatula for making the crepe, the crepe shapes. 
for spreading, spreading it out flat. It's called an offset spatula. Spatula, spatula. They come in a couple sizes. It's really funny. I'm ready to drink some lion's mane. Lion's mane, mushroom, got to cola. Those two things really help brain function, along with E3 Live. Um, my brain is fine, I'm just having fun. So we have flax here, we are going to, I wanna talk about the coconut flour. Now I have coconut flour, I'm very excited that lately, I've only noticed within the past year that you can buy coconut flour instead of flakes. If you can't find coconut flour at Whole Foods or online, you can take flakes and grind them in the dry container. But this one is so nice, so I ordered it from Wilderness Family Naturals and they're in Canada and they have really good olive oil as well, I mean coconut oil. So this has been really helpful. A half a cup of the coconut powder. following my scratchy recipe, I just adjust it as I go. Two teaspoons. So, I used this herb salt that I love. If any of you are in the UK, I really like it. It's Profusion Pink Himalayan uh, salt with herbs in it. I'm gonna put a little sprinkle of that. You don't, if you don't have it, the herbs are uh, marjoram, lovage, savory, sage, chives, parsley, thyme, basil, celery. It's really an exciting. It adds a little something. If you just have garlic, that's fine too. I'll use half a teaspoon of garlic. Um, that's Facebook calling me. I put up such a nice picture. I'm putting up a video of Herbie I took last night. It was such a beautiful dinner. He had the savory crepes with um, sauteed spinach. Um, not sauteed spinach, I, I caramelized onions and mushrooms and then I quickly cooked the spinach, like really cooked, just to make it soft so it's not so fluffy and unwieldy, and red peppers and it was just, um, he loved it so much and the dessert, he loved it so much, he actually got teary because uh, it reminded me of the movie like Water for Chocolate when the food, all the love that goes in the food and he's so sensitive now, he really feels it, it was really quite extraordinary and beautiful. So we have our salt in. Herbie is my dad who's 86, an organic vegan, and has no more pain, and just full of love and life. It's extraordinary. So we are going to, okay, so last time I used honey, which would make this not a raw vegan option, a raw vegan dish. If you want to make it vegan, we can do that. We'll just use um, maple syrup. That's funny, if we use maple syrup, that one won't entirely be raw, totally legit. Uh, organic gorgeous maple syrup. If we want to make it raw, this is funny, where raw is not always the healthiest because if we choose to use agave, that's not the finest sweetener, but it is supposedly raw. In any case, um, coconut sugar, maple syrup, whatever you have on hand that you're okay with, okay? So let's try, we'll use a tablespoon of, I haven't used this yet, but I think it'll be nice, maple syrup. Just kind of flavor balances. Um, it's not gonna make it sweet. We have zucchini. This one looks like it needs to be used pronto. And cutting on my. Oh. Let's see how many times I can walk away from the camera. I'll never forget a friend of mine was watching. And he goes, You can't walk away from the camera. I was like, Why not? I have to walk away from the camera if I think of something. Um, sometimes it's kind of boring to have everything lined up and it's just uh, dump and serve, I think they call it, and dump and stir. And I think it's more interesting to actually watch it happening while we go. So we've got gorgeous things here. Um, we did the garlic, we did the zucchini, and that's it. How easy is that? And this is going to be the batter. So all I have to do is get the right top. These are the two little, no, this is, no, that's the little top. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's a beautiful day here today. 
And I'm so happy that I've just been in the kitchen practicing because I really wanted to. I, I know I do my intuitive recipes and I make things up so you can see how they go as I make them up. It's really nice also sometimes just to have a very tried and true recipe. And these will go in a book, my book, someday. Okay, my ebook is coming out, I think, on Monday. I'm going to make the announcement on Monday. I guess we're going to make sure. Okay, so now we have the batter. And I'm going to show you. Sometimes the batters are a little thicker than others, as long as it just doesn't drip everywhere. You want it thick enough to be able to spread it, which it's hard filming alone to show you, but I am going to do it. Uh, first, let's look at the batter. We taste the batter. If you want to eat it out of here, you'll want to eat it out of the dehydrator. If it does not taste good, it's not going to miraculously become delicious when it gets dried at all. So we want to like it. Yeah, the batter looks good. If anything, I would say it's a little drippier than my sweet one. Um, I did add a little more water than last time. So I'm going to suggest instead of two and three quarter cup water, just use two and then add as you go. That will really, otherwise when you make it too liquidy, all you have to do is grind some more flax or add a little coconut powder. Um, I can make this work. This one's going to work. Okay, I'll be able to spread it, it'll be beautiful, and I will taste it for us. Beautiful. The maple syrup is less sweet than the honey, so I think I'd like to add a little bit of honey. People have problems with honey. I use a little bit locally harvested, sustainable honey. This I got in Mendocino. I am gonna add a little bit because Maple syrup is not as potent. I don't want perfection. White pepper, black pepper is nice to add to this. Um, if you don't want green flax, you can peel the zucchini, but I like the vitamins and minerals in the skin, in the skin. I have got, so keep your phone near your honey and maple syrup. Um, the Vitamix sounds like it's a little, uh, getting a little funky. So what I do is when it gets stuck, I take the spatula and I make sure I hold my hand at the top so, you know, it doesn't ever hit the blade. But I'm going to have to help it along with my spatula, okay? Okay, so when I do this, I am pushing the batter towards the middle because the Vitamix, Vitamix works in centrifugal, centrifugal motion. So we want to do that. Okay, now I'm going to get my Teflex, clean my station. I always clear. It just makes me feel better for the next step. It's important to keep, haha, <laughs> it's important to keep our environments in order, orderly, feels so good. When we wake up, I make sure every night that the kitchen's spotless because when I wake up in the morning, I can create again. I can make my tonic, I can make food. And it's not like catching up from the day before. And so we wanna keep, I know people live with a lot of clutter and I really wanna help you I really want to help people understand that our lives can be so much happier, simpler when we clean up our bodies and we clean up our homes. Um, you can't even imagine the kind of things that happen when you're all fresh and bright and you don't feel like, you know, when you're sitting in your home and something that, that isn't done needs to get done, you may not even be thinking about it, but it's registering. So it's feeling you ecstatic. And once you take care of all those things, then all of a sudden you can relax. And when you relax, then you're able to get inspiration uh, for things that are really divinely inspired, I say, like divine, divine ideas about what we should be doing, what we could be doing. All right, so everything off to the side. I would normally clear the whole counter since you're with me and I don't want to take up your time while I'm cleaning and I don't really feel like editing so much. I do all of this myself. Would it be so great to have somebody filming? Yes, but when I get inspiration, there's not always somebody here, so I have to manage. Um, okay, so here's a Teflex sheet. I think they're about $9 each. They last forever unless you cut into them. Mine just, I've never had to get rid of one. So we, what I normally do um, is I will take a scoop. Uh, 
I'll take a scoop, a big tablespoon, a scoop, and I put it out like that. And I dollop on two different Teflex sheets, uh, the same size. Um, batter and I go around and I do eight. I do the first one, then I add a second scoop to each one and then I take my next, this is going to make about eight, maybe five and a half inch in diameter crepes. And the trick is for these is to make them thick enough, not thin because they'll dehydrate too quickly and then they'll become, they can get crispy and when you go to fold them over, if you want to fold them over, you don't have to, you will have um, a crack. So I have found and I've practiced this, that the trick to this, and this is key, is to, you could have your ruler, I will tell you how thick they are. Um, the trick is to, I like to spin it around as I'm doing it, is to create the circles thick enough and you want them flat on top because it will dehydrate it the same as much as possible. They don't have to be perfect, but you just kind of go like that and make it into a circle. And it's pretty thick. This one is not as wide. Yeah, it's exactly, it's almost six inches. So anywhere from five and a half to six inches. And it is, it's a pretty thick one. I'm gonna make it a little thinner, but it's good. It will, it will reduce in size. It kind of flattens out when the moisture goes down. So let's see what we got here. Pull it to the edge. It's about, believe it or not, uh, me and rollers, it's about three quarters of an inch. That doesn't sound right. Three quarters, it's not, no, that's not right. It is so not right, hold on. It's about, Um, it's over whatever three quarters of half an inch is. It's in between a quarter to a half of an inch. And so, it is thick. Now what that does is it enables it to stay moist. And the other trick to making these is, now here's the thing. You're going to put it in the dehydrator for an hour. And when I start the dehydrator, I kick it up to 140 because right away it's not going to instantly reach 118 degrees. Anything above 118 degrees will cook it, but we want the fans going. And we don't we want when something's a little bit thick, we want to make sure that there's no mold. So we can kick it up a little bit. Even for half an hour, you can do it at 140 degrees and then I would put it in for an hour at 118 and then check it. And you're gonna keep checking it until it can be flipped over pretty easily. You know, you can, uh, the last batch I made, I was able to pick it up, flip it over. Sometimes I have to use the offset spatula. If it's too mushy underneath and won't do it, then you wait until it's a little more dehydrated. Um, it's the key is in the thickness and when to flip and then once you flipped the other key I guess there's three keys is to take it out before it's dry you know to really say you know what that's good enough I like it like that it's moist and we're going to store it in the refrigerator now I've stored them for no longer than five days they really get eaten pretty quickly uh, so it's hard for me to say Mm. Okay, these are absolutely perfect and now this will go in the dehydrator. I think I made a clip the other day of what it looks like when I flip it. I'll insert that here so you can see and I will show you the end result right now. I keep them in a glass container like so and I will put a picture of the gorgeous dish that I served Herbie yesterday. And here they are. As you can see, they are very 
pliable. I mean, I wouldn't just bend it in a half and crease it, but it's pliable. It could be eaten like a taco with your hand. I put all of the ingredients on top and serve it with a knife and fork. It's absolutely divine. So I really encourage you to try these. They're easy, delicious. They will wow your guests. I had two guests yesterday, one for lunch and one for dinner, and they were wowed. In fact, somebody said it was the best thing I've ever made. So that's, that's pretty good. That's a good testimonial. He just went, wow, like wow. So everybody, get your greens on, get your crepes on, and I will see you really soon. Okay, so I made the rest. The first ones were so generous in thickness and size, they're a little bigger than normal. So this would probably make eight five inch circles or six six inch circles or four large ones and four little ones for kids or, you know, it's nice to make them small sometimes because that way if you're having a party or you're having a dinner, um, smaller is nice because you're not overwhelming people with this one thing. So it really is up to you what works best for you. Um, I just want to give you an idea of how many it serves. My friend yesterday ate three for lunch. And different things you can do with them. I did spinach and sauteed mushrooms and onions. And what I forgot to tell you is that I made this macadamia nut sauce. And I, I've shown you that before. Um, it's cultured. So I, I let it ferment. I put probiotics and I let it ferment overnight on the counter. And it's just macadamia nuts, water, lemon juice, probiotics, salt. And I let it sit out overnight. It makes it easier to digest. Um, and in this particular one yesterday, I added a uh, habanero and I went to my garden and I picked fennel and dandelion all chopped up and green and onions chopped up and I put some shallot in and some pepper. So it was a very, very flavorful, creamy sauce that really did amazing. But you can do so many things with this. The possibilities are endless. I put a pate on it the other day. I made this kind of like pate out of nuts and seeds. I have plenty of those on the channel. And I put that on top with some onion and some sprouts. So there's a lot of things that we can do with this. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the flipping process and you'll see the end result, what Herbie had for dinner. And I love you guys and I'll see you soon. I thought you might like to see the crepes as I'm turning them. Okay, so these are my savory crepes that I made with zucchini. You can see the little flecks of the skin, which I like that. And uh, the skin is good for us, so unless you really need to make it look like pasta, leave the skin on. So here I am flipping them with my hands. That's like a miracle. Um, and so they're pliable. I really don't want to dehydrate. So, okay, so they've been in this dehydrator. That's my dehydrator. It's like a waist high <laughs> Cabela. Um, the name's not on it, but anyway, here is the deal. They're just gorgeous. So um, I was really mindful about them yesterday. I basically um, put them in on uh, for 45 minutes and set the timer on my phone and left them in at 140. The reason you raise it higher than 118 is because you want to um, kick up the dehydrating, you know, so that they don't that the time that, that you start it, you don't want them to, um, especially with things that are thick, you don't want them to mold. So it's okay. These actually are thin enough that I could have done them at 118 um, or 120, but basically I did it at 140 for 45 minutes, and then I had them on for another uh, maybe two hours. So there you have it these these will maybe take maybe half hour 40 minutes but i'll let you know but i wanted you to see that it's really exciting